As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see. Welcome to Home Group. My name is Rick Renner, and we've been waiting for you. And the we is me and Denise and Paul and Joel. Guys, welcome to Home Group. Thank you, Rick. And Home Group, welcome. Are you enjoying talking about the Holy Spirit? I'm enjoying this so much, Rick. Hey, welcome, Paul. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. It's wonderful that we get to talk about the Holy Spirit and the amazing work that He does in our lives. The Holy Spirit is truly a gift from the Father to each of us. Mm. He leads us. He guides us. He does so much for us. And we can work with Him. And if we choose to work with Him, we will be so much happier. We will be so much more full of joy. I think we'll even be more successful in life if we just listen to the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Mm. You know, Paul, you called the Holy Spirit the gift of the Father. And that's yes. what Peter says in Acts 2, 28. That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, a gift has to be unwrapped. Mm -hmm. You know, one time I was given a marvelous gift by somebody in the Moscow church, and I forgot about it. I just got busy, and I just forgot somebody gave me a gift. And we put it somewhere where I just forgot that I had received it, and it just sat there beautifully wrapped with a bow, never unwrapped. And one day I thought, you know, where is that gift? And I took the bow off and dug into that and took off all the paper. It was amazing what was in that box. That's what happens to a lot of Christians. They've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, but they have never unwrapped the truth to find out what's in Him. And that's what we're doing in these programs. But Joel, welcome to the home group. Thank you. I'm looking forward to tonight's home group because I've been told we're going to share some stories. We are. We're going to have a good time tonight. <laughs> but in the regular TV program, I'm teaching a new series called The Holy Spirit and You. It's 10 parts. The subtitle says, Working Together as Heaven's Dynamic Duo. And so many people are responding to this program's. So if you haven't ordered yours yet, please do. And remember that the study guide is free. All you have to do is go to renner.org or give us a call. You can download it. You can order this and get the study guide, which is free right now. And we're also offering you right now the book by the same name, The Holy Spirit in You. It is the first time ever in all these years that I have taught this book. I just felt like this book was so loaded with revelation and really practical teaching about how to partner with the Holy Spirit that I needed to teach it. So if you don't have this, please order it. And by the way, if you know anybody hungry for the Spirit of God, this would be a treasure to give them. And remember that if you need prayer, we're here for you, and we are ready to pray for you. But I actually remember when you gave me that book as a reading assignment. Yes. And I was supposed to write book reports and send them to you every single day. I was in Riga that summer alone, and I was supposed to read the book and send book reports, and this is like pre-email, so I must be old if this is pre-email. I was sending <laughs> faxes to hotels where you were staying in the United States. Well, I'm very glad you said that because I want people to know that we've been very intelligent, uh, intentional about discipling our own sons. Yes. Paul, I mean, our kids have read all of our materials. Well, I have not read all of them. Well, it's kind of hard to read everything. That would be thousands of pages. <laughs> Joel. You know what? It's kind of hard for me to write something small. If I write something small. Well, it's not because of you. It's because of how I've much mom writes. I've done something victorious. And Denise is writing and writing. Praise God, Denise. Amen. Well, Rick, you're not known for writing small books. You know, we just finished our autobiography. Let me say I finished our autobiography. It's a thousand pages, but it's filled with teaching. It's not just stories. It's really a mixture of teaching and stories. It's kind of like you get a, all of it in one big package. But hey, tonight we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. So let's go back. Are you ready? Yes. All right. We've already seen that there are 10 vital ministries of the Holy Spirit to us. Actually, there's more, but we're talking about 10. Number one, we saw in John 14, 16, the Holy Spirit comforts us. Number two, we saw in John 14, 17, the Holy Spirit indwells us. Hallelujah. We saw in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. We saw in John 14, 26, the Holy Spirit reminds us of Scripture, which means if you claim that you don't know the Bible because you have a bad memory, you just lost your excuse. Because the Holy Spirit's job is to remind you of Scripture. 
We saw in John 15, 26, the Holy Spirit testifies to us about Jesus and through us to others about Jesus. We saw in the last program in John 16, 9 and John 16, 10, the Holy Spirit convicts of sin and convinces of righteousness. But it goes on. Number eight, the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. That's John 16, verse 13. Number nine, the Holy Spirit reveals things to us. That's John 16, verse 13. And number 10, the Holy Spirit helps us to worship. But tonight, we're going to look at number eight, the Holy Spirit guides us. Jesus said this in John 16, verse 13. He declared, how be it? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you guide you. I want to talk about that word guide. It is the Greek word hodegas. It is a form of the word hodas. The word hodas is the word for a road. But when hodas becomes odegas, it's no longer a road, but it is a road guide, a tour guide, or one who leads you on an excursion. Now, people come to Russia all the time and they want to see the armory inside the Kremlin. You say, what is the armory? The armory is a treasure chamber. It is filled with the treasures of the czars. And if you want to have a really good guided tour of the armory, you need Rick Renner. I have been there so many times that I know what is in the armory, I know what's interesting, I know what's not interesting. I know where the toilets are. That's very important because there's only one place you can go to the bathroom. But if you go with me to the armory, I could lead you visually on a tour right now. All right, we walk in the door, get your tickets, you turn right, you check your clothes. You walk down the long hallway past all the souvenir cabinets through a vault door. The entire building is a vault. You walk up this way, the stairs, you turn, you come up the stairs and to your left is the next vault which leads into the crown jewels of the czars of Russia. You don't go there first. First you turn right and you go up another set of chairs, then another set of stairs, and you come into a room that is filled with amazing gowns, coronation gowns worn by all kinds of czarinas in Russia's past, including the coronation gown of Catherine the Great. And on the other side of the hallway are gowns which were worn by the priests of the Orthodox Church, remarkable gowns. The coronation gowns are spun of silver. Literally, they are spun of silver. The entire garments are made of silver. If you look at the gowns worn by the priests of the Orthodox Church from those days, they're spun with gold thread. There's one piece that has 250,000 freshwater pearls that are embedded with diamonds. It is unbelievable to see it. Then you hang right and you walk past the thrones of Ivan the Terrible and Michael Romanoff and the dual throne of Peter the Great and his brother Ivan. And then you hang another right and you walk into the room where you see all the jewelry worn by the horses of the czars. It's pretty amazing to see the jewelry worn by horses, including sapphires. Ay, ay, ay. And then you come back out of that room and you walk past the crowns of the Romanovs and the other czars. And then you walk into the room where all the carriages are and you see carriages. The wheels are studded with diamonds. That's just one floor. Then you go to the next floor where you see the ambassadorial gifts brought from people who came to see the czar. And it always reminds me of the scripture which says your gift will make room for you. No one came to see the czar empty-handed. They all brought gifts. Well, how do I know all of that? I've been there a few times over the years. <laughs> let's just say I quit counting at about number 200. I have been to that armory museum so many times. I've been there. I know what's there. I know what the toilets are. I know the best way to go. I know when your back is going to begin to hurt because the walls are all made of granite and marble. I know what you need to see, what you need to avoid, what you're going to like, what you're not going to find interesting. And so because I'm a guide, you can trust me. And why have you been there 200 times? Because I've taken people to see all the treasures of Russia. It's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, 
That's just a small group of treasures. You go to St. Petersburg, there's even more. But let me give you another example of a guide. Let's talk about Ephesus. The ancient side of Ephesus. Well, if you go to Ephesus without a guide, you're lost. You don't even know what you're looking at. You have no idea what you're looking at. You don't know whether to turn right, to go straight, to turn left, to go backward. You don't know anything unless you have a guide. Well, the first time I went to Ephesus, God graced me with a man who trained 5,000 guides. Isn't that amazing? But today, I've been there so many times that I've written a whole book on Ephesus called The Light and Darkness. You should order it. It is amazing. But if I was your guide, I could give you a really amazing tour of Ephesus because I've been there. You've not been there. But whether it's the Kremlin or whether it's St. Petersburg or whether it's the Kremlin Armory, a guide is of no value to you. First, unless you employ their services. Number two, you have to trust your guide. You have to trust your guide and not argue with your guide. Your guide really knows what he's talking about. Now, why did I tell all those stories? Because Jesus said the Holy Spirit will lead us on an excursion. He will be a tour guide. Which means the Holy Spirit's already been in your future. He knows the mind of God. Now, if you want to figure it out by yourself, go for it. But why would you do that when there's someone who's already been there? He knows every attack of the enemy that's been planned for you. The Holy Spirit knows every shortcut you need to take. The Holy Spirit knows when you need to sit down and take a break. The Holy Spirit knows what's going to be interesting. He knows what's going to be boring. The Holy Spirit can get you there in the fastest and the safest way. And when you're finished with life, you will say, wow, what an adventure. It's like the Kremlin. Everybody enters at the same spot. And they all leave at the same spot. The people leave feeling different things. They don't have the same experience. They don't have the same experience. If you try to figure it out on your own, you're going to leave saying, Oh, I'm glad that was over. If you have a good guide, you're going to say, Oh, I want to do that again. It depends on whether or not you have a guide. Mm -hmm. And those people who walk around with those little telephones on their, on their face, yeah, listening to the audio guide, I always feel so sorry for those people. Oh. Pressing the number to hear something in yes. five different languages it just sounds terrible. Think how many people are trying to figure out life by themselves, and they don't have to. Now, you know, I've, I told you I've been writing our autobiography. Our story is amazing. It is amazing. But you know why it's amazing? Because we have followed the Holy Spirit. Denise and I are not that smart. We just learned to listen and learned to trust. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come to Romans chapter 8, verse 14, go there. Romans chapter 14, verse 8. Chapter 8, verse 14. Oh, 8, verse 14. The Apostle Paul also writes about the leading of the Holy Spirit. And he says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The word led is the Greek word ago. It has two primary meanings. First, it was agricultural. And it described a farmer who would take a rope and he would wrap it around the neck of an animal and he would tug on the rope and the animal would follow him. Well, we saw that when we first moved to the former Soviet Union. We lived on the outside of a little town called Yelgava. And there was a little old babushka, that's an old Russian grandma, and she had a cow. And I watched this woman regularly because I was amazed by what she did. She would take that cow a little old, I'm talking about frail, wrinkled, little tiny grandmother. She'd have on her scarf and her little booties. She'd wrap that rope around that cow's neck and tug. And that cow would just obediently follow her. And the cow was like huge. Huge. And she was this little tiny thing. And I would look at that and think, why in the world is that cow following that little tiny woman? 
that cow could run right over her. And she carried a stake in her pocket. And sometimes she would knock the stake in the ground right in front of our house, tie the rope there, kind of pat the cows, say, I'll see you later. And she would leave. And the cow would stay there all day. And I would think, what is wrong with the cow? All the cow has to do is just move its neck and it could pull that stake up and be out of there. But the cow stayed where it was led. And about five o'clock in the evening, here she would come. That little grandma, she'd pull that stake up, grab that rope, tug, and there would go the cow just immediately following that grandma. That is exactly what the word ago means in this verse. One day I said to a local person, what is wrong with that cow? Why does that cow follow that woman? And why does that cow just stay where it's led? You know, he said to me, that woman has been leading that cow nearly from the time it was born. It's been trained to follow. That was so powerful to me. Our problem is we haven't been trained to follow the Holy Spirit. If we would start earlier in life, it'd be easier. But that cow just was led because it was trained and it totally trusted that grandma. And when she left it, it stayed where it had been led. There's so many truths in this. We need to let the Holy Spirit lead us. And guess what? Because it is the word ago, it means the Holy Spirit usually is going to lead us with a little tug or a little pull. It's not going to be a prophecy or a dream or a bolt of lightning. It's usually going to be the Holy Spirit saying, come on, I'm trying to lead you somewhere. But there's something else. The word ago, translated led, is also the root for the Greek word agon, the word agonizo. Do you hear a word? What word do you hear? Agony. Agony. It's very important because it tells us that it can be agony to be led because that word agon really means a wrestling match and it pictures a wrestling between your head and your heart. And very often your heart knows what it's supposed to do. You feel that tug of the Holy Spirit. And your head says, tilt, 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 tilt. You can't, you can't really mean that. Are you really telling me to do that? Are you really telling me to do that? Your heart says, yes, yes, yes. This is, this is the way. This is the Holy Spirit leading you. And your head says, no, it can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be, can't be. And sometimes there's a real wrestling that takes place between your head and your spirit. And you have to learn how to submit your head to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you an illustration. Denise and I were in Chicago. And we were speaking at a big conference. Maybe you've heard this story before. And we came home from the morning session, laid down to take a little nap. And then we were going to go to the evening session. And while we were laying there, I began to feel in my heart, don't leave the room. Do not leave the room. I thought that was weird. I said, Denise, I don't know why, but I think the Holy Spirit's telling me I'm supposed to stay in this room tonight. Why? Miss the meeting? What possibly could be the purpose of me just sitting in this room? She said, well, I don't feel that leading. I'm going to church. Well, I wanted to go to church. So I rolled around on the bed while we we're trying to sleep, just so disturbed. Finally, I said, I don't know what this is. This can't be the Lord. I'm going to the meeting. So we got in the car and we're on the way to the meeting, the whole way to the meeting. I feel like I'm in disobedience. I kept saying to Denise, I need to go back to the room. She said, well, honey, you better obey your heart. I said, right, why? Just tell me why. Would the Lord tell me to stay in a hotel room? This is crazy. Let's just go to the meeting. We got to the meeting, visited with all of our friends. When they all turned to go into the service, I said, Denise, I have to go back to the room. I don't know why. I have to be in the room. So I got in the car and we're driving back across Chicago to our hotel. And then I realized I'm going to miss dinner. <laughs> Because after the service, they're going to have dinner. I'm going to miss dinner. So I said to the driver, would you please pull into that fast food place? I want to get me a hamburger. And then I remembered we didn't have any toothpaste. So I walked across the parking lot to a fast, to a convenience store, got some toothpaste, took my time. I thought, I don't know why I'm going to the room anyway. I might as well do what I need to do. Got back in the car, finally got back to the hotel. And I remember the woman at the registration desk said, why are you back so early? Is the meeting over? 
why, why are you back to the room? I thought, what am I going to tell her? I feel led to be in the room tonight. I didn't know what to tell her. So I visited with her for a few moments. Finally, I pushed the button on the elevator, went up to the third floor, walked down the hallway, put my key card in the door, opened the door, walked into the room. And when I got in the room, it looked like a tornado had come through that room. Suitcases open, clothes thrown all over the place. I thought, what in the world happened here? And then I began to notice that Denise's jewelry box was opened. Jewelry was missing. I looked over to the table where my computer had been. My computer was gone. My briefcase was gone. In the briefcase was my passport and all my documents. And suddenly it dawned on me, we have been robbed. We have been robbed. And it took a moment to really hit me because when you've been robbed, it's such a sense of shock and violation. I stood there thinking, what? And I looked around at all that. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, now you know why I told you to stay in the room. <laughs> he knew. How did he know? Because he's a guide. He's already been in the front. He knows everything that's been planned. And if you listen to him, not only does he lead you what to do, sometimes he protects you from things. And I remember standing there thinking to myself, you know what? If I had stayed in the room, the thief would have never come in our room. And if I had stayed in the room and nothing had happened, when Denise came home that night, I probably would have said, that was a crazy thing that I felt led to stay in the room. Nothing happened here. And it made me wonder how many times we have obeyed and nothing happened. Maybe we think we missed it, but in fact, we were able to circumvent something because we listened. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit knew that. And he was trying to lead me, but my head wrestled with my heart. Any comments? Well, of course, I'm sure all of us have a story. Um, many, 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 many years ago when I was, I had disobeyed already the Lord in going to the wrong school for one year. So he was trying to get me back into the right school. And I, I obeyed. I went to the right school. But then I didn't have any money to go to that school. And um, I felt like that the Holy Spirit wanted me to go up to the dean of music and to tell him that I, I did not want my music scholarship. It wasn't much, but that's what I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me. That, that I don't want to receive. I don't want to receive my money. I sat under a tree outside of the music building for at least two hours, <coughs> arguing and arguing with the Holy Spirit that this makes no sense. I don't have any money. And I went to the dean and I, I, he already knew that my story that God had told me to go there. I mean, they already know that maybe this girl's a little bit off. She thinks that God tells her to do things. And he said, Denise, do you want me to be a father to you? And I said, yes. And he said, go to the financial aid office right now. Well, I'd already been to the financial aid office. And when you go there, it's just so many people in line. Did you tell him you didn't want the scholarship? Yeah. And, and that's when he looked at me like a father and said, do you want me to be a father to you? And he said, go to the financial aid office right now. I went to the financial aid office. There was not anybody in there. I got right in. Anyway, miracle happened. My whole school year was paid for. And, but the Holy Spirit was telling me to do something that I totally didn't understand. But what he was trying to do was get me in the audience of a man who was going to tell me what to do. Hmm. He knows everything. That's such a great story. You have never shared that story before. I've never heard that story ever and been married to you for 40 That's years. That's true. <clears throat> Mysteries are all the time being unwrapped. unwrapped. Don't miss home group. <laughs> <That's> <laughs>
But guys, we're out of time. <clears throat> but hey, the point tonight is the Holy Spirit will listen to you if you'll listen. Your head may argue, but train yourself to follow. And once he leads you somewhere, stay there until he says it's time to move again. Sleep well. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.